and welcome to the Wild Blue Podcast, perspectives on aviation lives, lifestyles, and business. Hi, this is Chris Kirk uh, with the Wild Blue Podcast, and welcome and thanks for listening, uh, where we delve into aviation lives, lifestyles, and business. Uh, today, I've got Mike Smith at Scope Aircraft Finance, and uh, Mike, thanks for joining us. I'm very happy to be here, Chris. Thanks. So I was just thinking a little bit ago, I was walking back from the hangar and uh, kind of just prepping in my mind for this podcast. When did we first meet? How long ago has it been? That's a good question. I think it's 2012, 2013. I was thinking about that the other day myself. I remember so you were what, 15, 16? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Just uh, got my training wheels on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Mike and I have, have uh, done business together over the years and uh, he's our go-to guy in the aircraft finance world. Um, you know, as I was just actually telling a prospect a minute ago, uh, we were discussing financing stuff uh, on his airplane. And, and uh, so I, I was telling him about you and about scope. And he was asking, he goes, well, why them? And I said, well, I said, it's, it's real easy for me. And that's because they do what they say they're going to do. And, and I can always count on them treating my customers right. I, I know that they're not going to, you know, be a three day wait on a phone or a return phone call and, and that kind of thing. I said, I, I don't know, frankly, I don't know how their rates or their terms or anything compared to anyone else because I get tired of people calling me up saying why, you know, these guys aren't returning my calls. And so if I just send them to you, you know, and, and we've all got probably a bucket of those kind of people, hmm. then I don't have to worry about it. So, um, so if you, if you are looking for aircraft financing and then Michael have a chance to throw in his contact info here in a little while, so uh, anyway, enough about that. Tell us about you. How, how did you get this business? What's your background? Absolutely. Well, I, I appreciate the plug and happy to be here. And so I've been doing aircraft loans for going on 10 years. I graduated from Ohio University in 2009 with an aviation flight degree. So my dream was to be an airline pilot. And so I went to college for aviation and started focusing on a little business coursework on the side while I was in college. And that really started because back when I was in high school, I got my private pilot license my senior year of high school. And I got the license at this small airport in Northeast Ohio. And the guy that ran the flight school was in his eighties. And I'd walk in the front door and he'd always tell me, Mike, what, what's your backup plan going to be? So well, I'm going to be your airline pilot, pal. Al, what, what else does there need to be? I said, well, what happens if, if you have a vision issue or, or you decide you don't want to be on the road five, six days a week, what are you going to do? It was a good thought provoking question that I wasn't prepared for at 18 years old. And so I, through college, worked as a bank teller part time up at a local bank in Northeast Ohio. And through a couple fits and starts, I was lucky enough to find an opportunity to mix aviation and banking in this wonderful industry called aircraft finance. So, how did you end up at Scope then? Yeah, so I worked at a bank here in Columbus, Ohio. That's where our office is located. And I was working as a teller there. And one of my best friends in the world. He and I were talking on a Saturday morning. He said, Mike, I see these ads for airplane lenders. Is that, that must be a thing. You should see if there's a job opportunity in that field. So I Googled aircraft lending and Scope showed up on the Google search. So I emailed the president of Scope at the time and said, Bob, here's my, here's my background. What do I need to do to get into that industry? And he responded, which was awesome. And I said, well, you'd be a credit analyst and it just so happens we're hiring one. Why don't you come down next Tuesday for an interview? And two weeks later, I started. Really? Yeah. And so, uh, and now, and what's your present position? I am an aircraft lender. So I focus on helping put loans together in all sorts of aircraft markets in the owner flown space. In the owner flown space. So kind of define that if you would. So. Yep. So anything, it's really any type of high performance piston, turboprop, light jet aircraft, anything that in theory you could fly single pilot as the owner of is really that target market we focus on. And it's not so much a dollar focus. It, we have rough rules we try to follow, but really anything in that market space from 150,000 up to 10 million, frankly, on some of those later model jets and turboprops, we have the capacity to handle in our operation. Okay, so you're you're looking at typically north of 150 grand when you when you guys are taking something on. Yep. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting. And so, if you, you're kind of looking at the people there, um, 
What, what, what kind of customers are those? I mean, what are these business owners that you're working with? Are they, where do they come from? Yeah, definitely. Most are business owners, business owners using the aircraft to help grow and maintain their business and then occasional personal use from there as well. And they'll start off in a piston and work their way up to a turboprop and potentially up to a light jet from there or just stay in more of a high performance turboprop. You see a lot of them doing that though, moving up the food chain. We, and We do about half of our portfolio growth every year is from current customers trading up into new aircraft. Really? Okay. Well, it kind of, it's kind of a, a good segue. I wanted to touch on this later anyway, but we'll just hit it now. So sure. if, if, uh, if I'm a, if I'm a prospective buyer, let's say that I'm, you know, uh, our market, we, we work with a lot of folks in the two and $300,000 range, you know, maybe half a million dollar range uh, as an average airplane. Um, and you know, I'm looking at getting into something. Um, what do I need to qualify? Maybe that's too broad of a, of a, a question or, you know, what, what can I expect for terms on something like that right now? What's, what's that working out to? It's a good question. And the good banker in me says it depends, Chris, because it does depend. And I think it's a good, let me explain kind of how we look at aircraft loans. Our number one objective in our operation is to make sure that through the life of the loan, there is an equity component maintained. So what do I mean by that? I mean that during your ownership length and the time the loan exists, we don't want you to be underwater. So we want the loan through a combination of down payment and repayment terms to pay off fast enough that you're not going to have to write a check if you sell the plane in say two or three years. Right. So that ends up depending as you know, on make and model, every aircraft looks a little differently in the marketplace. So every little loan structure is slightly different. Now, for the most part, that turns out to be about 15% down to 20% down. And usually for us, that means a 15 year amortization. So 15 year loan. Okay. It's, it's interesting that you talk about the uh, having equity in it the whole time, you know, back in, um, oh gosh, it was, it was probably 2008 timeframe somewhere in there. You know, we had more customers or prospects, I should say, because a lot of them ended up being customers that um, were in these airplanes that they needed to get out of and, and, and they needed to get out of them. And they were upside down, you know, they, yep. and, and some of them significantly so. Uh, I don't want to point out any, any specific uh, specifics on it, but uh, you can probably figure this out. A lot of them came from one manufacturer and one manufacturer pushing their product at very, very, uh, favorable terms and rates. And, mm -hmm. and then when those new products depreciated in a very short period of time, some of these folks were sitting there looking at airplanes that, you know, were six figures easy, um, less in, in value than they were just a couple of years prior. And then that shot them way below. And, and now they can't, you know, they try to sell the airplane and they, and they're looking at, at writing a check like that and they can't do it. And exactly. So, uh, that's that's interesting to hear. So no, that's a good reminder too. One other component is usage, utilization of the aircraft. I remember the 08, those examples, a lot of those had leasebacks involved. And not that a leaseback scenario is a bad thing. It's just that's additional usage on the airplane, which directly impacts your resale value. So you really need to think through your loan structure if there's a leaseback scenario involved. Do you do much of that? We don't do too many of them. We'll we'll see an occasional one, and it's partially because of our loan structure becomes admittedly, for lack of better words, conservative because of that potential residual value risk and the potential to be yeah. underwater. Yeah, that's one of those things that seems to be sold hard amongst the flight school and FBO community. Yep. And, uh, um, I, you know, I don't want to kind of get into a debate on that with, with folks, but a lot of times I will dissuade people from getting into those situations because the numbers just seem to be a little rosy on the front end, uh, especially when you put in the, uh, the wear and tear that's on that airplane over time. It seems to not, I, I just, I guess I've seen it just not work out quite as well as advertised over and over again. No, that's well worded. And I think a big takeaway for anybody listening or paying attention to this is that you really just need to do your homework. It's not a bad scenario. There's times where it works really well. It's just doing your proper due diligence on all things, which I think goes into what we've been talking about this whole time too, is all of these transactions, you need a good team on board, which is why we like working with your organization. 
you, so, you guys have a good team. What, yeah. What do you, um, tell us a little bit about what, what goes on there in your shop and, and who you have. Yeah, so Scope Aircraft Finance is a wholly owned subsidiary of Park National Bank. Park is a $9 billion bank in Ohio, North and South Carolina. So that's one thing that when you're looking at financing, you should think through who you want to work with in that, do you want to work with a bank or a broker? Both are great options in their own ways. A broker works with several banks behind the scenes. A direct lender is the other option that is what we are. We underwrite the loan. We fund the loan, we accept payments, and we'll help you with the payoff down the road. So we are a wholly owned subsidiary of a bank, which means we handle the entire process here. In our shop itself, we have a 10 person team that works in our office here in Columbus, Ohio. Most people are working from home right now for obvious reasons, and that's an okay thing. You're a technologically focused industry anyway, so it's worked out okay for everybody. We have four lenders on the team. We have a couple of people in the credit department, and then a couple of people in the administrative side that will help with the various steps along the way. Our lenders are credit trained. This is one of my favorite parts of our organization, actually. The lending team, credit trained and usually closing and paperwork trained. So throughout the entire process, we can step in to help move things along if the additional resources are needed on our side. It's a real team approach, which I love. So you say credit trained, what does that mean? It means in theory, I am able to take a loan request and underwrite it myself and help get it approved opposed to have to send it to a credit department. Okay. okay. And, and for, um, you know, for people who are listening that are thinking about financing, um, I think one of the advantages that we see from uh, the opposite side of the table on this is that things uh, with an organization like yours go so much quicker and so much more smoothly yes. uh, and you don't find yourself, I, I kind of equate it to, uh, you know, you're, you go to a doctor or maybe you're in the hospital and everybody that comes in there asks you the same questions over and over and over again and you get tired of it. And, and sometimes uh, in the aircraft finance world, we will, we avoid certain lenders because of that, because they, you'll talk with five different people in the course of it and you're educating each one of those five different people every time you talk to them yeah. and it doesn't feel like uh, things are getting moved down the track very far each time you know it just seems like oh my gosh I'm just pulling my hair out here and so uh, do you guys you know, I, obviously you're the direct lender do you work with brokers we do. In fact, there's several finance brokers in the industry. We will work with them. So there's a potential if you go the broker route, you may still be working with us, which again is an okay thing. We want to support each other in the industry, but we, we work with all sorts of people in the industry. I would imagine a lot of those brokers kind of try to uh, do what I'm talking about in, in that they're, uh, they're checking you guys out and making sure that, Hey, I, I'm, I want to make sure that this guy that I'm working with, Mike Smith here at Scope, these guys are easy to work with and they, uh, you know, they're going to treat my customer right as well. And it's not going to take an inordinate amount of time to get it done. Exactly right. We want to be on the same page and all pulling in the same direction. That's the number so, one goal. You know, a typical, a typical, um, you know, credit, uh, score kind of person and, you know, uh, credit worthiness. What kind of, um, what kind of time are you, you know, broad range typically looking at to go from application with you to funding to get a loan closed? I use an old fashioned phrase called, I move at the pace of the transaction. Again, another one of those vague banker answers for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <No laughs> but <clue> usually, <laughs> <laughs> usually in a typical loan, uh, right now, now right now is, we'll get back to that in a second, but on a normal year, uh, I would say usually about two weeks for an approval process and about one week to close. So I always say between two to four weeks, just because Buffer time needs to be in there for whatever reason. We moved as fast as three days and it really depends on credit complexity because small business owners have different financial setups and we have to understand each specific scenario to make that appropriate credit decision. So that's really a pacing item for that transaction. Probably takes a little longer with a business owner because you have more stuff Correct. to go through than, than an employee. Ex exactly right. Okay. Cause I, I know we had a recent transaction with you that, um, I thought it, gosh, I thought it went really fast. We had a, a customer that we were uh, acquiring an airplane for that had uh, been down the road of uh, uh, trying to get financing. It wasn't an issue on his part at all. Uh, 
he was, um, how can I say this uh, gingerly? He was, he was working with a, um, uh, an association. I'll just put it that way. And, and it just took forever. I mean, the, the, oh my Lord, I, I just thought this was never going to end. And I kept telling him, I'm like, you shouldn't have to put up with this. It, it should not take this long. And, um, you know, and, and you guys were able, I think it was seven days, maybe. We, we um, moved, and that was an example of uh, move at the pace of the transaction. If there's a need to try to, we can make things happen. And then depending on the loan size and situation, we have some flexibilities to speed things up as necessary. And I think an example there that there's another lesson too: communication, communication and relationship is key. When all parties are talking to each other through even it, well before the banks even involved, communication through the entire transaction process makes it makes it much smoother. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot here, Mike, because um, I, I, I firmly believe in time off and, and having a mar margin in your life. But, you know, one of the things that you did that was above and beyond um, and that, I, frankly, we just don't see, you know, we certainly didn't see with the others, is that I know that you spent some time late at night and early in the morning uh, filling in the blanks and, you know, getting some of these things taken care of. So, uh, and, that, and that was greatly appreciated. But, um, so it's just, you know, I think it's just a different paradigm between, you know, a company like yours versus uh, some others that are um, maybe less customer focused. We are here in the business to serve the owner flown aircraft industry in whatever capacity we can. Sometimes that takes a little more work and some weeks are a little light and, and that's okay. We're here to serve. That's our number one job. Yeah. Yeah. So are, do you find yourselves financing beyond the airplane, like components, engines, avionics, that kind of thing? Occasionally, usually where that would come up is when a customer has a overhaul or an avionics upgrade they want to do, we will refinance their loan and include that. So we'll definitely entertain those kind of things, interior paint, all sorts of things along those lines. Is there, is there more of a, of a, I guess, a, I don't know if down payment is the right word. Is it? Yeah, it, it, that is a great word. That's totally appropriate. Uh, banker phrase would be advance rate on that. We would look okay. at a lower advance rate uh, than a typical purchase. And again, it's that same mindset of looking at what the value is going to be over the right. life of the loan. So you do paint interior and this, we're getting into your wheelhouse. So tell me if I'm right on this or not, but in theory, you put in the money, we just use hundred thousand dollars for easy round Ohio math. Uh, it's worth a hundred thousand now, but in five years, how much is that paint interior actually worth? probably zero, maybe a little bit on the market. So we have to make sure that structure is paying accordingly to keep that in mind. I thought everything you did to an airplane added value to it. <laughs> I, I'm getting that comment all the time, you know, and, and sometimes it's uh, tongue in cheek and sometimes people are very serious about that. So I have to be careful at, at whether or not I laugh at that comment. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, interesting. So uh, now as, as you move forward in scope, what is, um, you know, what, what are your plans? What are, what are you going to do? What's next for Mike? Well, we actually in the middle of kind of restructuring our organization in a good way. We had a couple staffing changes over the past few months to individuals had some opportunities to grow from there. So we're, we're working at uh, growing the organization, bringing on some new people. I've been spending a little bit of time working in training and helping individuals grow, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I've got to do a little bit of that more, which is just a blast. So scope is seeing uh, if they're doing that, is it fair to say that scope is seeing more market opportunity here? We are. One of the interesting twists of the pandemic has been an increase in financing. Now, most of our loans have been in the turboprop and jet spaces. So you look back on a 10 year historical look back the average in the spaces we serve was 60 to 70% of buyers were paying cash and the rest were financing that that has moved a bit in the reset and uh, not the recession, but in this pandemic, uh, partially because money is very cheap right now. And partially because people want to hold on to their cash in a way they didn't want to three years ago. You just never know what's around the corner. Just a little bit of preservation. So we're deep, we are seeing an uptick in business and we're happy, happy to see that and blessed and happy to serve. Yeah. So are, one question I meant to ask earlier, and that is, is there any um, geographic restriction to, there is, and it's just the lower 48. Uh, anything in the continental contiguous United States, we're happy to do for personal and business use. Okay. All right. I, I, this may be a little bit duplicitous, but I want to touch on this again, because uh, I'm going to ask it in a, maybe a little bit of a different way. 
we we work with a lot of folks who finance and more so like you say than had been in the past sure. um, there, there was a period of time where shoot i rarely saw a finance deal right uh, now i'll bet it's I, i'll bet it's 65 70 percent of the time if i had to look at it i just guess we see a lot of folks though that want to use their local bank mm -hmm. got the relationship there I, I kind of try to discourage that, but you know, it's, I don't want to step on any toes. Uh, what, what advantage do you bring to the table over that local bank who obviously may not do a tremendous number of airplane loans? It's such a tough question. And I'll tell you why, because I am a child of a community bank. When I was a teller in college, it was a three branch bank. I still hand stamped the checks when the deposits came in and all that kind of stuff. And I saw the local relationships. Our parent company, Park National Bank, started out as a small community bank, and we're now a big community bank, as we had 12 affiliate banks around Ohio and North and South Carolina that we now consolidate under one brand, but still operates as a series of community banks. So I'm not one to get in the middle of somebody in their deep community banking relationship. Now, having said that, having somebody that understands the aviation paperwork is also incredibly important because it is a different language than what the community bankers most likely used to. And it just can make the process a little bit clunky because in most cases, that means the community bank is probably learning how to do the transaction along the way. And you want experts when you're trying to close an airplane loan. It is still an airplane after all. It's a sophisticated piece of equipment. And we should have sophisticated people working on that transaction. Yeah, yep. You know, one of the biggest areas we see with the community bank, uh, and again, I agree with your, your uh, having those relationships, it's a closing, uh, not from the funding bank, but it's from the bank that holds the note from the, the seller. Yes. Oftentimes, uh, somebody's changed in positions. Uh, you know, the guy that had educated himself about aircraft loans didn't pass that corporate knowledge on to the next person because it was the only one that they did. And now we're trying to get a lien cleared uh, or any number of things. And, uh, you know, some of them, uh, I always, I always cringe. Some of them, you know, they still want the, the hard copy paperwork things, you know, where a lot of, you know, work with you guys or a lot of other, anybody else and maybe, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but electronic, we can get these things done lickety yep. split. And now we're waiting on, you know, I've even had them say, well, we just put it in the mail. Really? Because I would have sent you 30 bucks to send it FedEx overnight <laughs> right. at the very least. <laughs> but now we're, you know, now we're down two or three days. So that's kind of where I see the community bank thing, you know, good people. It's just that there's just not a lot of, um, a lot of knowledge there on how to do it. That is a great point because the bank is the one, the biggest insurance is involved throughout the entire ownership as well. But the, the bank relationship is much bigger than just closing the loan itself, as you just described. It has everything to do with who, it, when you send your payments and who are you sending them to? If you have an issue or need a piece of paper, say you're working on your uh, taxes and you forget how much interest you paid in the previous year, who do you call to get that information? When you go to sell the airplane, which is something you really don't think about when you buy the plane, like you were just describing, when you go to sell the airplane, who do I talk to to make sure the, the payoff goes smoothly? How do I know how much I owe on that payoff? And that's where recognizing who, who's going to be involved through the entire ownership experience matters. And that's where we excel because we handle that entire experience here. Right. Right. And that's, that's important. That, that is important. And I think to a large degree, you can still get that, that, um, that relationship, you know, it may not be walking into the local branch, but if it's this one segment of your business and especially if it's the same person, you know, that you're dealing with, uh, yeah, we, we, we are, we are a child of a community bank ourselves here. So right. we, we take that community bank mindset and we bring it into aviation. So those that have community banking relationships that are looking to finance airplanes and want an expert in the industry, we're a good option for you because we, we think like a community bank still. Right. Well, um, so, you know, most of, most of the customers that we work with, whether we're buying or selling are business owners, they are, they're small business owners. They're a lot of times they're moving up. Sometimes they're getting into it for the first time. And then we've got also the, the, the number of those that you know, are just moving out, uh, retirement or whatever. But for the guys that are, uh, that are there looking to get into aviation, maybe they're moving up, they are a business owner. Um, what, 
what pitfalls are there? What, what, what advice can you give them that would make it easier for them to obtain financing when the time comes? I think two things stick out immediately. Be prepared and trust. Be prepared, meaning have your financials ready. If there's a story to tell, be prepared to tell it. If, and it's not even necessarily a nefarious story. Just explain your business to us. You have been aware of your business since the day you started it. I have been aware of your business from the, the clock started when I downloaded the financials from our secure portal. I have a lot of catch up to do. <laughs> Anything you can do to help me catch up quicker is appreciated. On the trust side, not all bankers are evil people. We're not asking questions because we want to find a reason to not do the loan. We're asking questions because we want to understand your story. And the more we work together to find that answer, the smoother it's going to feel for everybody. I, I, working with banks is a cringe-worthy experience sometimes. I understand that. We try to keep it as easy as possible. And the way to do that is through those things, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's good advice because you're, you're right. Um, sometimes it's like going to the doctor. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> you know, nobody, nobody likes kind of opening their life up and uh, that, that trust part that, that is critically important. I agree. That's, that's interesting. That you should say that. So are you doing any flying anymore? Do you? Uh, yeah, I got, I, I, I kind of, ha I hadn't, I set put the headset up for a little bit so I could focus on work. And then I actually just got current right before COVID hit. And then I, we've been so busy. I haven't had enough time to do it safely. And that's kind of the way I think of it is I, I want to go up, but admittedly, I, I haven't had enough time to go up recently to do it safely just yet. What were you flying? I had recently flown a 172. All right. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And is that what you were primary, primarily flying in school then? And yeah, we, had, we had a fleet of Piper Warriors down in Athens, and then I flight instructed after college in a 172 as well. So probably about, I, about 500 hours I have and about half of them are in a 172 and the other half in a Warrior. I'll be darned. And, and so what, what's your highest rating? What do you got for licenses and ratings? Uh, CFI, CFII, about as high as I got. And you keep those current? Yes. Okay. Actually, I'm working on my renewal right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I let my double I expire this year and I wasn't even aware that it was expiring. So I'm kind of kicking myself for that. But uh, that's, that's a, a buddy of mine just texted me when he got finished with his uh, check ride. He goes, oh my gosh, it was a four hour oral. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, and I'll let mine expire. I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's always the warning. So everyone that's listening, check your certificate dates. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, that's interesting. I, I, uh, I really appreciate you spending a little bit of time here and kind of educating everybody on the market. And, you know, you do get out and about a little bit when, when times permit. So, um, you know, sometimes you are, um, you know, I can't remember there, there's a series of events that you had gone on. I knew you were with some of the, the insurance guys and some of the manufacturers, but, um, yeah, there were some air, air expos that used to go on kind of around the Great Plains and then all the all the regular events. We spent a lot of time up at Oshkosh, as everybody does, and NBAA is a big one for us and just different regional events. We try to be out in the industry, especially in those owner phone markets, those owner owner groups yeah. that have meetings once a year. We usually attend those partially for education purpose. We want to understand and see the perspective of those owners and those pilots and support the safety safety focus these those guys have as well. And you're taking the company plane to go do those things? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no? No, not at this point. <laughs> uh, bummer. All right. So somebody wants to get a hold of you. You know, they, they want to talk financing. They want to just talk banking or, or just get to know you better. How do they do that? Absolutely. So I'm going to give my direct line out and then I'll give my email out too. And I'm going to say them twice. Okay. So you can hear it and then write it down. Direct line is area code 614 228 Five one four four. That's six one four two two eight five one four four. And then the email is MJ Smith at scopeair.com. And that's MJ Smith at scopeair.com. Okay. And so the website, of course, is scopeair.com. Scopeair.com. Yep. You got it. Okay. And if you still want to use the www, you can put that on there too. So. You got that right. <laughs> Well, Mike, it's been, it's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I uh, really, uh, really appreciate it. I'm always learning something. You're, you're very, you're very good about, uh, 
educating, which I think is important because there's, uh, you know, a buddy of mine years ago told me, uh, you know, there are no experts in aviation. There are only those who refuse to quit learning. So as soon as I run into somebody that tells me an ex they're an expert in, in aviation, the hair on the back of my neck starts going up. And generally, um, you know, my wife will accuse me of this. I stop listening. Can you imagine? Uh, so. <laughs> no, that's a great line in perspective. And I, I definitely think the same way on all that. So if anyone has any questions at any time, I'm always happy to talk. Well, great. Well, again, I'm Chris Kirk at Wild Blue Aircraft Sales, and uh, be sure to uh, share and uh, uh, let others know about our podcast. Subscribe if you already haven't. We are on all the major podcast outlets. And uh, give us a call if you have any questions or want to talk airplanes. Our number is 888-773-4249, and you can find us at flywildblue.com. So thanks again, Mike. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for listening to the Wild Blue Podcast. Find us online at flywildblue.com.